Let me give you an example of the limited dynamic range of current cameras. Here is an image I took, again, uh, in my home. Uh, here, basically, a short exposure, remembering, again, the concepts of exposure that we've looked at from exposure triangle and stuff in the, when we talk about cameras. And here, if you look at it, you should be able to see it's a dark scene, but outside you can see a little bit of snow. I took this picture on a, you know, one of the rare snowy days in Atlanta, uh, but it's a short exposure. You can't see any of the details inside, but look outside. You can see a lot of snow and brightness. Same image or same scene, different exposure values. Long exposure, of course, all of the insides are nice and visible now, but you might think that uh, there's a lot of overexposure going on at this point, and the details outside are not good. So this is an underexposed image. This is an overexposed image. Underexposed because lots of pixels did not get any detail. Lots of black pixels here. Overexposed, a lot of white bright pixels. So you, if you were to build histograms of these images, you would start seeing a lot more variance on the white pixels. And for this one, you'd see a lot more black pixels. Again, note, both of them are exactly the same scene. They're not even at different times of the day. They were taken uh, seconds after each other. And that's the kind of stuff that basically what cameras give you right now. And that is a limited dynamic range. And now, of course, we are interested in capturing the range from here to there. To capture this dynamic range, we basically need 5 to 10 million values to store all the brightness around us. Remember the luminosity stuff that I showed you, the scale of information was significant. Here we want to basically be able to capture all of this in one image. Problem is, and recall when we started talking about images, most images capture each of the three different channels in basic 8-bit images, values of 0 to 255, sometimes basically just uh, put in values of 0 to 1.0, but again, there are only 256 values as opposed to much wider range that would cover the range from here to there. Nowhere close to, of course, being able to capture 5 to, mil 5 to 10 million values. Just to showcase this, let's look at this example again. Here, if you notice, I'm showing you the high dynamic range. In the real world, this was a dynamic range from 10 raised to minus 6 to 10 raised to 6. Uh, and that's what we're trying to look at. Of course, on a photograph, what we would most probably do is just showcase this one. And that's what basically is shown here. I'm basically showing all the values that are much more on the brighter side and focusing it here. The other end of the spectrum is the long exposure. And of course, this is the long exposure image. Again, a lot more bright values. And here what we'll be doing in this dynamic range is most probably just capture the region here and pack it into my 0 to 255 values. Again, a lot of detail would be lost. Here I'm basically showing you more of the information on this side of the spectrum.